So hello, welcome to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through all the kit that I've assembled to help me run 2000 miles in 70 days. That's a marathon a day for 70 days along the River Danube from the sea in Romania to the source in Germany. I'm largely going kind of self-sufficient. I am gonna be sleeping in campsites. I have found some kind of beds in hostels and bits and pieces, but everything I have on the bed here is pretty much the kit that I need if I have to be on my own self-sufficient somewhere in the wilderness. It's gonna be quite kind of long stretches where I'll be in you know the middle of nowhere in Romania. So if I need to survive, I have everything that I need right here in this kit. It is all gonna whittle down into this one 24 litre pack. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna whip you through everything I think it takes to do a multi-day adventure like this. A lot of this kit actually, if you're thinking about going out and doing something like the Marathon de Saab, or you're gonna do another kind of stage race, all of this is appropriate to you. All of this stuff will work. Much of this I used in the past when I did the race across the Sahara in, at the Marathon de Saab. It's tried and tested. And yeah, it's, this is the kind of freedom kit that you need to be able to go out and just, just provided you can run, you've got enough everything you need here to sleep, to survive, to eat, and to do your thing. So let's whip, let's whip into it. Start, what I'm gonna do is over here, I'm gonna start with all the camping gear that I've got. So the first thing I've got rolled up nice and tight here, it goes down really snug as a Yeti Fever Zero sleeping bag. It weighs about 250 grams. It packs down actually not much bigger than a small football and that'll go in my pack. That's what I'll use, nice and lightweight. I'm gonna be running in hot conditions so that will give me all of the protection I need overnight. So next up, I've got the bivy sack. Now this is an Alp kit bivy sack. It's a nice lightweight one. It's about 400 grams, it's waterproof. That is the layer that I'm gonna put on outside my sleeping bag when I'm sleeping under the stars with no face covering. I'll use that. Inside of that, I'm gonna have this. This is a Thermarest Neolite X-Air uh, sleeping mat. It's a half mat, so it comes down roughly sort of just below my bum. Um, it's not full length, but that is again, it packs down nice and light, and that's to save weight and space. I also have a poncho. Now this is a fully waterproof, kind of like army style, Forrest Gump style poncho that also has holes in the corner so you can put it up and use it as a ceiling if you need protection from the rain, should it rain. It's quite heavy, that one but that is something that I feel like I need. It also works as a ground mat as well, if you just wanna put something, a little bit of extra layer of protection under your bivy sack. I've got a mozzie net, seven pounds that was, nice little mozzie net. I will put that on over my face inside my bivy sack. That just means that I can lie with my face out to the sort of um, to the stars and feel a bit more protected from all those creatures that are definitely gonna try and bite me. I've got a couple of bungee cords, essential really for this kind of thing. They'd just be in the pack. If anything falls off or I need to kind of attach anything else to the outside of my bag, those are gonna come in handy. They're also good for hooking up that poncho if I need to put that up as my ceiling. A Couple of things, I've got this uh, this Harrier, it's a dry bag, really, really useful. Again, just anything overnight or should I encounter rain, anything that needs to be safe and secure and dry, I'll put in that. Particularly even for condensation overnight, it's important. Take all your electronics and stash that, maybe stick it inside the bivy sack as well, but it just gives you a little bit of extra protection. I've got a small one of those also for other things in case like my, my phone or battery packs, I wanna put them. And I've also, just for to be absolutely sure, I've wrapped up one larger. This is actually a marathon bag from one of the, it's like a marathon race drop bag from the Boston Marathon, I think that is. And I'll carry that again, just in case I need to put stuff outside of my bivy sack when I'm sleeping. So when it comes to hydration on the route, I'm gonna take these two Argo Raid Light bottles. They're kind of nice and ergonomic. They sit kind of quite nice on the on the chest, so you know, nice and comfortable. 800 mils, so I'll have you know a decent amount of water to carry most of those stations. I'm also going to take one backup bottle. This is a Camelback Life Straw bottle, and this means I can basically drink whatever water I encounter. And there might be some times when I can't find a good source of water, and it might be that I have to sort of dip into a puddle or maybe the river. This will filter out 99% of the nasties. So in extreme circumstances, I will have a water supply. Another thing for safety, I'm gonna encounter plenty of wild dogs and stray dogs along the route, particularly in Romania. They're roaming everywhere. They were there on the recce. So I've got two things here that are gonna help me ward those dogs off should they get too close. One is called a Doggy Dazzler 2, and this is an audio deterrent. It basically plays a sound that the dogs don't like, sort of makes them kind of jolt away and um, that keeps some of them at bay. For those that aren't deterred by that, I've got this K19. It's almost like a pepper spray for dogs. Uh, that's if they get a bit close, spray that at them, and it kind of basically knocks them sort of a bit sideways for 20 minutes. It's not harmful for them long-term, but it does kind of stun them and keep them away. So I'm hoping that's gonna be enough, fingers crossed. Uh, over here, I'm gonna go into talk about sort of keeping things away. 
I've got some Life Systems Expedition Plus insect repellent. Now this has got 95% DEET. This is maximum strength Expedition anti mozzie anti-tick repellent. That is gonna be used a lot. I've got some P20 50 factor sun cream. This is what apply once, whack it on in the morning when you run and it works the whole time. Don't need to reapply. And it, I used that in the desert. I didn't get sunburn at all. And for a blondie, that's an important thing. So that's great. I will decant that to save the space into this little bottle. So it saves space and saves weight. Other protection, I've got this Two Toms Sport Shield. This is basically a bit like Body Glide. It's chafing and blister prevention. So whack it on your nipples, on your other soft bits, and uh, it stops everything chafing. Very important. I don't go sort of leave home on one of these without that because that uh, over 70 days is going to be kind of vital. I don't need to have chafy bits. Um, a toothbrush, which you cut in half. You're not an adventurer if you haven't cut your toothbrush in half. I'll have a little pot with some toothpaste in there. I've got a knife. Took that to the MDS as well. That'll be essential. Nail clippers. Need those because over 70 days my nails are going to get long. Medical scissors. A small medical kit with pills. It's got some you know, ibuprofen, Pro Plus. I will have some antibiotics in there. Um, I've got plasters of all kinds. Tick twister. There's going to be ticks out there at different parts in Romania. So these will help if I get a tick on me. I'll take those out with those. Two syringes and I'll be taking some Friar's Balsam. So Friar's Balsam is basically iodine. Uh, it's good for store, uh, staving off kind of infections. If I get small blisters, I'll pierce them with these syringes and then I'll inject a little bit of Friar's Balsam into that, which basically disinfects it and keeps it nice and clean. It stops it going crazy. Speaking of which, I've got these as well. These are inodine patches, they're iodine patches. So for any kind of cuts or anything that might get infected, you pop these on and then you wrap them with your bandages or your plasters and it makes sure that things stay nice and clean and hygienic, warding off infections. And then just a bunch of other bits and pieces I've got. You know, I've got a few kind of wipes. I'm not taking an awful lot for that. Um, and other kind of bandages and, and bits and bobs that will go in there. So that's my kind of medical kit. I've got a secure, I've got the obligatory kind of safety blanket, safety pins. I've got some spare cord for tying things together. Head torch. This one is the BioLite. It's really light, sort of. It's not hugely bright, but I hope I don't need to be using that too much. I'm not going to be doing too much running in the dark. Then onto, I've got a bag of cables, onto the electronics. I'm gonna be taking a Garmin InReach Mini 2. Now this is a satellite communicator. It basically will be a beacon for where I am. It lets people track me. You'll be able to track the journey via Garmin automatically every day when I hit go. I'll be able to send texts to friends and family. From this I can receive texts as well. And in emergencies I can hit up a beacon as well and people will be able to locate me. So should I get stuck for any reason in any serious circumstances, I've got backup here from this, where there's no phone network, this thing still works. Speaking of Garmin, I've got my Garmin Enduro. This has got, I think, like an 80 hour GPS battery life when the solar works full power, it's gonna be hot. That means I can get a few days tracking and turn-by-turn -turn navigation on this without having to recharge it. That's gonna be very important. I've got a couple of battery packs for recharging, and I've also got this Isis Freeloader solar charging panel that I'll put on my back to charge. Hoping that's going to work. Um, that, those things all can be sketchy, but I'm going to be running in good conditions. So essentially, when it comes to my gadgets, I'm hoping I'll be able to go two or three days without needing to get to a source of electricity. Headphones, I've got the Jaybird Vista 2. These things are IP68 rated. They've got a 24-hour battery life. The case is also rated as well. So they're good in terms of sort of survival out there when they're going to take some sweaty and some potentially wet conditions. For shooting the whole adventure, I've got an InstaGo... For shooting the whole adventure, I've got the Insta360 GO 2. Super lightweight, tiny little camera. It's got third, about 32 gigs worth of storage on there. Does all kinds of stuff, kind of selfie modes. I'll be pairing that with a selfie stick. I can set it down. I've got different mounts that will let me do like a magnet a pendant mount here so I can have it here. Or I can stick it on my hat and have it camera mounted. This has got a sticky so I can put it up and get run through shots. All of those kind of things to capture what I'm going to be doing out there to make a video for the channel ongoing and when I get back. Quickly into my fueling and hydration. I'm gonna do a separate video on all the stuff that I'm gonna take. There's a few key elements here that are gonna be in my pack. For fueling the runs, basically, I've got precision fuel and hydration, 90 gram carb pouches, some of those for each week. And I've also got these chews, 30 grams there are on these tiny little chews. And so I'll be using a mixture of those during the runs to power the actual marathons. Recovery, I'm gonna be taking Velaforte's Vita um, recovery powders for that to get that kind of fuel back in afterwards and do what I need to do with the rebuilding. And then hydration wise, I'm gonna take a mixture of precision fuel and hydration tabs 
These are a thousand in terms of their sodium content and 1500s. 1500s will be before um, and after I've run and the 1000s will be in my bottles as I go. One bottle with the, with the electrolytes, one bottle with water. I've got a cap, kick it in the dick. Thank you, Dave, that's my dentist. He made these caps. It's a rainbow unicorn, that's going on. Um, so then over pretty much into my clothing, so if I go, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna whip round here and I'm gonna talk about um, what I've got for my, for my camp wear. So I'm only taking one set of running gear and I'm gonna take one change of clothes for out of running gear. So essentially I'm gonna switch up, that's it. I'm not taking very much at all. And they're almost like one item of each of these clothes. So one pair of pants, and all that kind of stuff. So for my camp wear, I've got a Volaback Earth base layer. Now it's a Merino wall base layer, it's super light. It's the most comfortable thing to put on when you're tired, when you need a bit of extra warmth, but it's so light as well on the body. It's just really nice. And I think in evenings, if it does get cold or any of that kind of stuff, this is a good one. I've also got an Under Armour um, heat gear base layer. It's got thumb loops. It's a little bit more substantial. And I think this might be something that I'll put on when I get into my bivy during the night. It kind of, it's good for keeping creepy crawlies off the body, which I don't really want to have. Um, just makes you feel nice and secure. But also that doubles as a, as a shirt that I can wear when I'm wandering around the towns. I've got a pair of Under Armour running leggings. Again, same, they'll be good for keeping bugs off me in the, in the sleeping bag and all that kind of stuff and wandering around. A pair of gloves. I've got a slightly mental Under Armour balaclava, which again, when I did the recce, there's so many flies and bugs. Sometimes in the bivy, you don't want to feel like you're being crawled on. I whack that thing on and it protects all my face from the mozzies behind the net. I've then got one of the most important items. Now this is a, this is a um, this is the um, Seamalp Storm Pro 3H waterproof running jacket. Essentially, this has got like a 20,000 rated waterproofing. It's super waterproof. It's hopefully still breathable. Uh, but this, I'm not, I don't intend really to run in this very much unless it's really hammering it down. But this will be something that I'll rely on if it gets into the evening and I need to be fully waterproof. I've also got these Columbia um, trousers which are also waterproof. Um, they've got kind of Omni Shield, which is great. They're sort of, again, nice and lightweight, got zip pockets, really comfortable. And that'll be what I do most of my kind of wearing when I'm not running. I'm debating on this. This is like a micro towel-ish. I don't know. I suppose I should take a towel because at some point I'm gonna have to wash, but it weighs a bit. So I'm wondering whether or not that'll go in. Over to my kind of the essential kind of running gear. Now my kit, I will have one pair of base layer shorts I've got these kind of CXP base layer shorts. I'll put the details of all of this over on the screen so you know exactly which name. But they've got a nice kind of wide waistband that doesn't rub. It's kind of super comfortable. Um, and they just protect you, no chafing. And I've worn them a lot on long distance runs. And they've just become my kind of go-to. They're really reliable in terms of comfort and no chafing and protection and feel, making everything feel like it's nice and secure. This is an absolute go-to for me all the time. This is the Innovate um, Base Layer T 3.0 used it an awful lot again it's really lightweight uh, it dries super fast it's great if you want to i'm going to wear a base layer t-shirt underneath because i tend to but if you just want to wear this it's also fantastic you know it's so light it's good when it gets really hot i've got the seamalp aosta french h i think they're called shorts again super comfortable they've got built-in base layers as well but the best bit about these is that they have a belt built in around the top for stashing extra bits and bobs while I'm running and they've got zip pockets. They're super silky and they feel so nice on. They've got a really good fit. Over here, I'm gonna take three pairs of these. I've only got one to show you, but these are the Brave Endurance Performance Socks. They come in all these kind of great, I think absolutely fantastic designs. These are the only item of clothing that I've ever owned. I think that people have complimented me on and I get compliments on them all the time. Random strangers come up and say, I really like your socks. So I'm taking three pairs of these. I think I'm gonna take a rockets. I've got some pink ones and maybe one other pair, um, just three pairs of socks. And then a t-shirt, I've got a couple of t-shirts that will have name printed on, three buffs, because you need buffs, those will come in handy. And then final piece of kit, which is going in there, is this Naked Ultra HC running vest, and I will wear that underneath my t-shirt. What this does is let me stash a few bits of kit out of kind of visibility. So I think some of my essentials that I don't want people necessarily to know that I've got will be under that. So unless they pad me down, if people come to rob me, they're gonna to have to pad me down to find things, you know, like passport and all of that kind of stuff. So that is gonna go in there. I need some shades. So I've got the Tifosi Swick 
These are 35 pounds. They've got polarized lenses. They're scratch proof. They're nice and durable. They've got rubberized kind of tips. They don't slip when you're sweating. And I think for, you know, for that kind of money, it's brilliant. It doesn't really matter too much if they get lost or they get destroyed and they work really well. And then the final biggie, I've done a video about this on the channel as well, is the shoes, the all important shoes. People say, what shoes are you gonna wear? And it's a, it was a massive choice, big dilemma. Eventually, for reasons I'll explain in the video that I'll put a, 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 a card up here so you can click on that and go and find out. I'm gonna take the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. These are just a fantastic lightweight shoe, super versatile. They are so comfortable when you put them on. They can go fast, they can go slow. I think they're gonna have good durability. They don't blister, all of those things mean that I'm gonna take the Speed 2 and hopefully I might get sent some of these, or if there's a new generation out, I might get sent those along the way too. So that, in a sort of roundabout way, is all the kit. I've forgotten one thing, I've forgotten one thing, the all important. All of this goes into this backpack. Now this, I've had struggle with the backpack a lot, I've tried different ones. I was gonna take my Wah backpack that I use in the Marathon to Saab because it's great, but they'd sold out, you couldn't get it. So I tried a Raid Light pack, I tried an, an Om pack. Neither of those two really did it. The Raid Light, the bottle sat too high. The Om, the bag kept falling off the harness. And then a friend that I met in the UTMB recommended Instinct. New brand, French brand, do this trail pack, which is called the Instinct XX. It's an 18 to 24 litre, so it's got expandable capacity and it's just brilliantly well thought out. So it's got a roll top for that expansion. It's got brilliant compartmentalization. So you've got this one backpack section here. You've got extra bits down in the bottom here that you can stash kind of the thermo rest. There's a main compartment up top. It's actually got a pack that attaches on the top that is designed for you to put your solar panel into. So that sits on the top of your back when you're running. And so I don't have to work out a way of attaching that to the top of the pack. On the front, it will take both of those two 800ml Raid Light bottles in here on either side. But also, if you don't like the bottles too high, they've also got these kind of stretchy pouches down the bottom and you can put them down the bottom as well. And that is also, I think, going to be coming handy if I want to carry extra water. So if I want to double up on my water, I can do, or I can stash food and gels and fuel. It's got a number of zippered compartments as well. Uh, it kind of... It sits nicely off the back as well. It doesn't feel heavy. The one thing I'm really surprised about is once you've got all of this in, I think I've made it down to around about eight kilos. I'll, I'll do a test once I've packed it in again. And it doesn't feel like eight kilos with this pack. It lifts the weight off the pack. The harness spreads it nicely. You've got a nice wide sort of harness strap here that's padded, but yet breathable. And all in, I'm so happy with this pack. I think this is, you know, I'm so glad that that recommendation came through my, from my friend because I think this is gonna do an absolutely outstanding job for me. So yeah, now all I've gotta do is get it in the pack, cut off some little bits of weight and we are good to go. So that has been my whip round of all the kit I'm gonna take when I run the Danube from sea to source. I leave on the 26th of June. If you want to find out how to follow the journey, and there's gonna be links in the caption below, you can do that support the charity if you live out near the danube you want to come run with me i'm looking for people to come and join me for some miles i'm open to words of encouragement along the way there's going to be some dark moments so hit me up with messages yeah there'll be more videos on the channel here as well but for now that has been it i hope you've enjoyed it if you have any questions about the kit if you're doing a multi-stage adventure and you want some advice feel free to hit me up as well uh, i hope you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon mm -hmm.